and good morning from the Scottish Highlands. Today we're at Glenmore Distillery uh, in Elgin. We started our morning in Inverness with Rabbi's Tours and our first stop is here at the distillery. We decided to go with two tastings and they were a bit more generous than we expected so we're feeling a little warm down below right now and maybe a little a little fuzzy up top and it's 11 10 a.m. I love you Scotland We began the northern part of our adventure from beautiful Durham, making our way to Inverness via Newcastle. Three times. Train malfunctions are a fact of life in the UK. After a crazy coach ride and a bit of sleep, we woke up in Inverness, the capital of the Scottish Highlands. We'd booked a Rabbi's tour of the Cairngorms, and we were whisked away to our first stop, the Glen Moray Distillery. Since we were on our long-delayed honeymoon, why not start with some of Speyside's warmth? We sampled two different flights of small batch and enjoyed the characteristics and complexities of each. The setting of a working whiskey distillery even at that hour of the morning, gave the Scottish part of my ancestry a sense of belonging. Okay, the, the whiskey didn't hurt either. We jumped back in the Sprinter van and continued on our tour. The next stop was the Craglaki Bridge in Abalur. Built in 1812, it was a working bridge until 1963, when it underwent a major refurbishment. Nowadays, it's just used by cyclists and pedestrians but it still provides stunning views for everyone. Moving further west, we stop by Muthal Old Church. These ruins date back to the late 12th century and provide a glimpse into its medieval past. Ghostly and beautiful. Cairngorms National Park, home to mountains, ski hills, lakes, beauty, and reindeer. Michael Utzi brought the first reindeer in 1952, where they've lived ever since. Yes, they're used to pull Santa's sleigh during the holidays, but for the rest of the year, they graze in the park as well as Glenlivet Estate 30 miles away. We were racing daylight, so we sped off to our final stop of the tour, Carbridge and its ever so photogenic old packhorse bridge. It's simply magical. We got back to Inverness just in time for Guy Fawkes Day, also known as Bonfire Night, and the fireworks on this blustery evening. Our accommodation on this leg was Blackfriars Inverness, an 18th century inn with charming rooms above the pub. I'm not gonna lie, the tub was a huge selling point, and the stay was quite pleasant. The owner and staff made us feel welcomed and at home. The next morning, after caffeinating, we set out on foot to explore the city. The striking stone buildings stand in defiance of the biting North Sea wind. We gravitated towards Leakey's Bookshop, one of the most photographed stores in Scotland. You can easily get lost in this massive selection of history and reference materials that Leakey's offers. All too soon, it was time to jump back on the train, this time to Edinburgh, continuing the Scottish leg of our adventure. To say that I love rail travel would be an understatement. There's a certain magic which happens when you can zoom past the British countryside at more than 100 miles per hour, yet feel totally at ease. We were greeted by the imposing Scott Monument as we walked from Waverley Station to our hotel for the evening, the lovely Eden Lock.
We began the next morning in Prince's Street Gardens, situated at the base of the city's icon, Edinburgh Castle. Established over 200 years ago, the gardens give the city a peaceful green belt. Well, most of the time. Gardner's Cottage is about as quaint as it gets, don't you think? One of the things you really must do while you're in Edinburgh is visit the Royal Mile. Stretching from Edinburgh Castle down to Holyrood Palace and Scottish Parliament, the Royal Mile was the main thoroughfare of Old Town. The Mile has its fair share of tourist shops, pubs and attractions, but keep your eyes peeled for numerous closes, side alleys and lovely Victoria Street. Some say that Victoria Street was the inspiration for Harry Potter's Diagon Alley, but I still think it's the shambles in York. We decided to try slug and lettuce on a whim. The food was good, and the atmosphere? Especially some of the clientele. It was entertaining. We'll be back. We fueled up the next morning, and Becca booked us on a hop-on, hop-off bus tour. It's a great way to see the sights and learn about the city in a casual, set-your-own-pace kind of way. Stone is clearly the preferred medium of construction in Scotland. It exudes longevity, resilience, and strength. I often marvel at the effort it took to put each stone into place. Arthur's seat dominates the view at the end of the Royal Mile. When the weather's decent, it's a very manageable hike, but remember, it does get quite windy at times. I've been fortunate enough to be in Edinburgh a number of times now, and one thing is, this never gets old. It's always breathtaking. I mean, just check out this view. If you're looking for a bit of a treat, the Johnny Walker experience on Prince's Street is just the place. We waded through the ever so tempting shop, then made our way over to the elevator and decided to go up top to the 1820 bar, took part in some Johnny Walker blue and a little bit of rose in the shadow of Edinburgh Castle. This was nice. As many vloggers have already said, Edinburgh played a pivotal role in the creation of the Harry Potter franchise. Even the cemeteries here are drop-dead gorgeous. On that cheesy and morbid note, we then went to the last drop in Grass Market. The Last Drop got its name for being the pub where those who were sentenced to death by hanging were taken for their final drink. If you're gonna go, go with a smile. During the summer months, Grass Market hosts local artisans and merchants selling their goods to locals and tourists alike. We took in our final views of this amazing city before turning in for the night, as we had a very early train to catch the next morning, all the way down to Bath. Edinburgh will always have a piece of my heart, and I suspect it holds a special place for many others. We'll see you again, friends. Hopefully soon. Take care. <laughs>